So Roberto, what exactly is a community drum jam? You know, my entry into the whole drum jam concept and uh, the drum circle world was directly through corporate. So I did not participate in any community thing, etc., etc. I had no exposure or reference to that because the context in which I came into this whole thing was corporate. Because somebody asked me, I said, I can try, I can do it. I was curious. Um, but once I met Arthur, I really started to understand there are different levels of this whole activity. I first went up to him and introduced myself to him, saying, um, you know, I'm from India, ta -ta -ta -ta, and I'm here to do corporate drum circles. And he just rolled his eyes. He see, like, I could see in his face, in his body language, like, oh, another one of those, you know. And I didn't get it. I didn't understand why his reaction was that. Um, I thought everyone was doing that. <laughs> I didn't know. Then he started talking about the different types of drum circles and the essence of the drum circles. What is the core meaning of the drum circles? And it all stems from community because 10,000 years ago, our ancestors, how did civilization begin? I mean, we were hunting, we were gathering, we would all come together in the evening. We would sit around a campfire. We would share our food, our bounty. We would exchange our experiences, our learnings as a society. And that's how communities were born. And then what would people do? They would eat. After that, they would start playing the drums or they would start singing. So it's always been the evolution of community and society. This has always been an integral part of that. And somewhere along the way, it got lost, uh, especially in modern society where it's been such an individualistic culture now. Uh, you know, so the more populated the world has become, the more people there are, the more isolated the individual seems. So this addresses that in a very, very deep and primal way. We all have it in us. You know, so we have a lot of advantages working for us just by us being the people we are at this point in time in history. We carry all of our past generations with us. I mean, our ancestors that learning, that experience, it all manifests itself. Like, how do you know to do certain things? You just, it's an instinct, right? But it's come through this whole evolution. So this is a very strong entity in terms of bringing that back into focus. So why do you think is there a need for a community drum circle to happen in? Again, in it's times? been the, you know, when you're working in the corporate field, it, sometimes the parameters are very clear and they're very defined and they're very narrow. This can encompass a lot more. So in the community space, we allow that to really just be explored in its fullest content, in its purest form. Because there's no agenda, there's no hidden messages, there's no, you know, driving down a mission statement or a target or something. It's just about you and me as human beings. And we're just playing, we're just communicating using instruments instead of talking. It's like having a conversation. So a lot of people who maybe might feel lonely, they somehow get drawn to this because they get a sense of community. They get a sense of belonging. There's an unspoken connect that is made. Because when you're sitting in a circle, you're looking at people, you're hearing people and you're feeling the vibrations. So it works on all these multiple levels. You know, it's not just a mental thing, it's not just a physical thing. It's the mind, body and soul. It's, it's, it's the human, human spirit. That's what we're playing with. Sometimes it's not, it goes beyond music as an entity in itself. Because it, we're just talking about life. Why did you feel as a person to give back to the community? Because what you do in Bangalore uh, for the last about three years yeah. plus that you've been doing, why did you feel the need to do something for your fellow citizens? Because it's, it's not a money-making thing. In fact, you spend money from your pocket. We do. Um, we've been in that situation where since we started off in the corporate field, um, 
we put ourselves, I think, into that situation. We consciously made certain uh, decisions. And we had very clear ideas of how we would like it to be, considering this point in time where we are as a society in India. Because if you're not going to impact the people around where you live, there's no point talking on a global scale and a universal model. And it has to be something that's a tangible thing that you can see at least, you know, if not hand over something on a physical level. We're not doing that. We're just talking about the spirit. So when you actually can empower people and make them believe and make them feel good and they feel good about it without feeling manipulated or cheated or, you know, it's just the pure joy of doing it. And it manifests itself every single time. And the community in Bangalore, for us, it was a give back because, you know, growing up in the 80s in Bangalore, you were really living in a bubble. We had no idea what the rest of the country actually... And we didn't have the kind of access or travel and, you know, you don't fly here and there. We didn't have that kind of money. We were kids, we were growing up, we were very isolated in our bubbles with our music, which is very good in a way. You know, because we have some incredible memories and experiences to draw from. Um, but somewhere that gets slowly lost in the Bangalore that we see around us today. It's become a more homogenized universe. Anywhere you find the same shops, the same food, it's, you know, the globalization concept. But I think there is a certain special spirit that's there in any given city. Be it Chennai, be it Bombay, be it Delhi, be it Bangalore. Uh, there is a vibe of the people who have been there, who have grown up there. And when we thought of getting into the whole community space, it took us four years to do it. For, only for the reason that we didn't find the right place. We could have started it anytime, anywhere. But we were very clear that we wanted it to be on a very clear, open, level ground in the center of Bangalore. And we had tried talking to quite a few people who didn't really understand why we wanted to do it. And we were very lucky when we got in touch with the Metro people who had just opened up the boulevard. Um, that's when things really started taking shape and becoming a reality. So from a concept and an idea, it, it's to see it's, what it's become today has been an incredible, incredible journey. So 40 community sessions down Yesterday was Drum Jam. Number yeah, community drum jam party. So, how has that community evolved? What it was seen? everyone. You know, you have to be a little crazy if you're gonna do these things. Uh, when we first started telling people, they were all like, "What? You're gonna take, you know, instruments on the road on MG Road, and you're gonna play with three, four hundred people? Uh, that's not a good idea. They'll run away with it. You're gonna lose all your instruments the first day." But somewhere, you know, having gone through this whole process, however cynical or whatever the world might be today, you know, you still have hope and you still believe in the good of people in general. You might curse an individual, but generally people should be good. And uh, we stuck to that belief and we were saying like, no, we just, we just want to do it. Of course. You cannot be that, you know, up in the clouds where you just go there and randomly do it. We took certain precautions. Uh, we prepared for it. We were aware of the ambience, aware of the risk. But uh, it's incredible because we've done 40 community jams in the center of town, you know, on the boulevard, in the metro, the Rangoli metro center. And um, we haven't lost an instrument yet. Okay. So that's... There's some hope for humanity somewhere, you know. Uh, so if you could share some memorable moments that you experienced and saw in the community drum jam sessions, let you <laughs> remember some every, interesting ones. Every single one. But it's anything that, that really is, you know, that the viewers can really feel happy. You know, the viewers them. need to come and experience it. That's all I can say. <laughs> every single one has been a mind-blowing experience. And you, because no one is forcing you to be there, we're just creating a setting. 
and somehow people come in, they get it. We don't explain anything, we don't talk. We just sit down, share our instruments, share our spirit and we just play. And they respond. And th that response is something that's incredible because we have no idea who the people are. It's, it's not a fixed audience. It's not a, nothing is a given. It's like going for a prepared conversation. It's not like that at all. It's not a show. It's not a performance. It's an interactive drumming session. That's all it is. And how do you prepare for that without knowing who you're going to be playing with? And in most cases, 90% are non-musicians. But they get it. And when you hear what people can do when they're given a certain, you know, um, setting, it's incredible. So I can't really pick out any one thing because you just never know when the next thing is going to come and just amaze you again. So good luck to you and Drum Jam for fantastic community drum jams. And I'm sure a lot of people will come to Bangalore and time their visits. Anytime. We're on, on third, Facebook. <laughs> third Sunday of a month. We do this on the third Sunday of every month, yeah. And we're going to keep it going as long as we can. You know, it's, this is a lifelong thing. It's our give back to Bangalore. We wanted to do that and we have. So that's a good feeling.